today on Dude Grow Show. Bringing you in, growers. Bringing you in, DGC. We're going to talk outdoor. Outdoor grow season is upon us, or almost upon us. It's time to uh, start planning. We're going to talk a little bit outdoor grow, getting ready, genetic strains. Right. Also, apparently, right. YouTube has a war on weed. A war on weed. Really? I mean, that's pretty, is pretty it, strong wording, Scotty. I would say it's a battle, but uh, they've been doing it for a long time. Once you have so many battles, isn't that considered a war? We'll talk about it. We'll talk about it. It's driving me crazy, though. <laughs> Also in the news, cannabis clone banks get into a uh, big time, man, big time. Cannabis clone banks taking tons of cuts for commercial cultivators. People get yep. a little paranoid about their genetics and people hogging them. Um, and, and, and also coming up, okay to fly with weed. Uh, we have the DGC yeah. Cup coming up. Maybe this is on point. Some people might be flying in. Um, I'm going to say survey says yes, but we'll see. We'll see. I like saying that. I feel, feel smooth. Survey says. Um, all right. <laughs> Sorry, I had to laugh. What's the host of that show? The one host, uh, there's a few. The current host? Richard, uh, Steve Harvey, who gets into my feed, man. He's in my feed. Very empowering guy, okay? I'm not like, by the way, they oh. feed all those people the answers. All right, let's get this straight. Apparently, Burt Kreischer's wife has a crush on Steve Harvey. That's off subject. We're also going to discuss McDonald's or cannabis. What's more dangerous? Yes, that's pretty. You, <laughs> well, YouTube uh, uh, will allow you to advertise uh, that. You ever seen that KFC? I took a picture of it with double. It's just double fried chicken. They pretend that's a bun, and then they just put like bacon and cheese in the middle. You can buy that. Get coupons for it on YouTube. That shit will kill you a lot faster than weed will. Didn't that one dude eat McDonald's for how long? Was it Super Size Me or something? Yeah, um, he got really I would be like sick. I don't, how would you, yeah, I would never do that to myself. Not worth it for the documentary. Maybe, but yeah. Since we're here to laugh and learn about growing, I just had to throw something in here, Scotty. Dude, I locked myself in the garage yesterday, okay? And I had to call a neighbor. <laughs> they just had some, my garage broke. I was in the garage. I knew it was broken. And I undid some cables. You know how your garages have the little red pull thing? Yeah. Like that disconnects yeah. it from track. I'm like, okay, everything's free. Now it's time to pull that. And, it and I pulled it. No, and the, the garage was like four foot open and it just slammed down, which I anticipate it would. But what I didn't know was I was not strong enough to open it. It's like a 300 pound plus door or some shit. So I called my neighbor. Uh, I'm locked in the garage and uh, they, they used the Spicoli on me. Okay, Spicoli, I'll be there in five minutes. Uh, uh, how long would it take until you time. started eating the dog food, man? <laughs> <laughs> I had thought about it. what would I do. I had my phone with me. I didn't have any weed. It was the end of the oh, day after I worked cool. out. I had one beer. I'm like, life's good for a little bit still. <laughs> you had one beer. That's awesome. Uh, All right, that's this funny. episode brought to you by, before we hop into it, guys, realgrowers.com. Pick up your recharge. Grow dots. Make growing simple, guys. Oh. If you have not learned about microbes yet. By listening to this show and know the importance of microbes in your grow system and almost any grow system, uh, super important. Great way to make nutrients more available. Great way to see stronger plants in 48 hours, as Scotty says. You drop a joint on the floor. And then I rolled over it with my chair. I know. Yeah. Hmm. Does that yes. mean we need to put up one of those technical difficulty things right now for a few minutes? <laughs> I think so. I think so. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, the uh, grow dots, actually, oh, I wish I could show flower. Uh, JR Token uh, put a 10 gallon, put a cherry paloma in a 10 gallon container, sent me some pictures of this beast today, and it was absolutely gorgeous. So I'm um, psyched that people are growing simply with the grow dots recharge combo and go give it a whirl. Was it less than 20 bucks for uh, you can do what, up to a five gallon container? Got plenty of grow dots, plenty of recharge for it. Go try it. I dare you. Realgrowers.com, shout it out, Real Growers Recharge on Amazon. If you're in Canada, dudesworld.ca. If you guys are shopping for your grow, don't forget about the pros, dudegrows.com forward slash pros, guys. That's where all the coupon codes are listed out for DGC vetted gear, man. Search any of those companies, copy and paste them, put it in the search bar, Dude Grows. You're going to see a multitude of posts about how DDC growers are using these products up in their game. Dudegrows.com forward slash pros. And new DGC merch, man. I don't know if I said it on this show. We have a DGC rolling tray. Shout out to Lifted Woodworks, guys. A beautiful wood rolling tray here that you can get over on dudegrows.com forward slash merch. And we also, man, that thing's nice. I got to get that a new one. That is gorgeous. 
Wow. Uh, also looking at uh, <laughs> Maestro Grow Journal. We made these how many years ago, Scotty? It must have been like six years ago. Yeah, this is a OG while ago. Grow. Wow. Wow. Um, just, you know, you guys like to use a little pen and paper to keep track of your grow. There's nice little, I don't know if, uh, Grambo, you can click on the image down there to show the inside of it. Yeah. Just look. Yeah, there you go. Um, it just has nice tables for everything. Veg, bloom day, the date, what you did, what your inputs were. Great way to keep track of your grow. GDC Grow Journal, 1995. Dudegrows.com forward slash merch. Very All cool, right, man. Let's do some grow talk first here. Right off the bat, keep the growers happy before we get into our uh, fun rambling BSing, if you will. BSing's good, no? BSing? I love BSing like with you, dude. That's why I do the show. If I was just going to talk grow, uh, I, could, I could, uh, could talk grow with some other people that are less entertaining than you, sir. All right? That I like less. Mm. I don't know. I like you better, dude. I hate when you go to Hawaii and then you bring back coffee and you're like, this Hawaiian coffee is so good and it's only going to be around for a little bit. And then I'm just creating an expensive habit. Like if I just start ordering Hawaiian coffee online, no bueno. You know, it's just not very economical, but damn, this is good shit. I got high uh, espresso online and like I fucked up, I guess. And I oh, did like all of a sudden, like I thought I was buying one bag and it was a five bag like restaurant pack. I was like, oh, I screwed up. Then like three other orders came. I had like a year and a half's worth of espresso. You know, None we talked about subscriptions Hawaii. on the other show. So some things I'm thinking might be worth a subscription. Like, Coffee, we'll go through a certain amount of coffee, uh, toilet paper, paper, like some of the staples I think are worth the subscription. Yeah, um, I, I might have a subscription to toilet paper. <laughs> <laughs> you do you do the dog food su subscription though, right? You guys got I do join nothing. some dog food club? I do absolutely nothing. All right. I just show up and there's yeah. boxes and my wife seems to have uh have found stuff. Talk to and by the way, I've got on Saturday's show, now they just keep on putting boxes, you know, food, whatever, delivery uh, boxes, you know, what do they call them, subscription services. And they, they want to give me the, the, <laughs> the seconds food box, all right, for like shit food that <laughs> is like dented cans and bad produce. I love and it. Stuff. I like that. They're like, so much gets thrown out. Let us mail it to you. <laughs> All right, grow talk here. Outdoor season's coming, man. Outdoor season's coming. First off, let's start off. Do you grow different strains outdoors than indoors? You sure can. Um, you can try and select outdoor strains, and some uh, breeders actually specialize in trying to find strains that, and this could be, you know, regional, where you're at. Um, so I did find by using that search bar. Uh, over at dudegrows.com. I just searched outdoor and had a good comment from Green in the Greenhouse, who's an outdoor small hobby greenhouse grower. It says, preparation is the key to outdoor greenhouse growing. You need to start with good genetics. Try and find a breeder that knows what they're doing when it comes to outdoor. I'm using Dragon Flame Genetics. Thanks, Banner, for the Know Your Breeder episode. Uh, they Shout really the know what they're talking Banner. about when it comes to, Banner yeah, when it comes to outdoor. Here. I don't know if that episode is still up. We'll have to check, guys. We did have, obviously, back in the day, the YouTube snafu, but uh, Know Your Breeder series is back, running strong. Did you so say really snafu? Do you know what snafu actually stands for? What? Situation normal, all fucked up. Snafu. <laughs> I did not know that. Um, so I messaged them on Discord and told them what the situation was here in the greenhouse, and they made some recommendations. It's a game changer when you can chat with the breeder directly. Totally agree with that. That's not always an option. Shout out to like Rasta Jeff off the top of my head. Does his own podcast, breeder that you can get a hold of. Um, it's very handy. It says after choosing your breeder, it's time, uh, it's your breeder and strain, it's time to set up your greenhouse. <coughs> there are a lot of variables that are under control, so you need to concentrate on what you can. Like airflow is really important. Most things are out of control in a greenhouse, and that's okay. You just roll with it. So good points there, Scotty. Um, as far as, go ahead. I will say, man, I am shocked. My greenhouse, I'll be looking, it'd be winter. You know, it's still, man, it gets wintry. And my greenhouse has these hydraulic uh, windows that open up a little bit when it gets, I think it's past 65 degrees or 70 degrees. Mm -hmm. Those things are open frequently during the winter. Like the amount of that, that whole greenhouse effect, it turns out it's real. 
not a light and the heat go in. And again, light goes in, brings the heat with it. And that is IR, right? I actually, I think I've talked about this before, but there's infrared and then there's UV, right? The ultraviolet. The infrared is the one that brings the heat in with it, if I'm not mistaken. Yes. Right? Correct. All right. Did you go to... Uh, like, did, did you, like, take oceanography or chemistry when you were in high school? Man? I didn't take oceanography. I took some chemistry. It See, blew they, my mind. I was, smoked way too much weed to t- take chemistry. It blew my mind. I literally <laughs> couldn't deal with it. Yeah. They put me in oceanography. There's yeah. Interesting in its own right. Four big oceans, man. <laughs> if you believe science. Yeah. <laughs> um. I just think, think ahead now before we'll hit this. You got a little uh, a link here to low odor strange, which is kind of interesting. Um, also think about, uh, I don't know if we have it in the notes here. No, I wanted to bring up not just greenhouse. People can get a little intimidated thinking about cost or expense doing a greenhouse. Try not to buy the disposable shit greenhouses on Amazon. If you can, uh, Amazon, Amazon, if you can help yourself. <laughs> There's plenty of options on there for stuff that's just a bunch of plastic that the wind's going to blow away eventually, like happened to Scotty. And, um, yeah, making just coverage. If you can, like, my bamboo tiki hut, I literally made out of bamboo, which is pretty affordable, just a structure that would hold polycarbonate panels to keep the rain and or hail. Hail is what I ran into in Colorado. Talk about fucking up your plants. Um, So if you can have anything and rain and, and to keep weather off your plants, open air, that is a good start. Um, but, but let's hit your uh, low odor strains here. Yeah, Where'd definitely. And, and hang on real quick. So you're talking the Amazon greenhouses and stuff like that. Uh, yeah. If if you there is fairly inexpensive ways to make greenhouses, I would say if you can just get the bows, the bows are those bent U parts. And that's not an expensive aspect of the greenhouse. Although when you start getting them, you might as well just take a look. Normally, it's like frame only and then kits. But for a couple grand, you can get yourself a pretty nice greenhouse. I know not everybody has a couple grand laying around. But uh, you can get a beautiful greenhouse. Uh, well, I mean, you, you got a little bit of a hookup on your. I think your. I don't even know what the retail was on your greenhouse, which is a nice four. That's like a four season greenhouse. Can hold snow load, handle high winds, and where you're at, you need it as well. Yeah, yeah. Um, but talking about, I don't know if I believe this. Best low odor strains, like know, going outside. Not, of course, I'm not sure if I believe it <laughs> It's caused problems for Scotty. He's literally been asked not to grow by code enforcement, right? Code enforcement, if you will. Um, where I lived asked. in Colorado on a cul-de-sac, my neighbors were cool, luckily, even though, which I was really good friends with my immediate neighbor, Tempney Todd's, they didn't really like the smell, but they're just like, you know, it's only part of the season, whatever, we get it, dude, you want to grow weed, it's what you do. But if you have neighbors that are going to be bothered about it, especially in Prohibition land, I guess consider some strains definitely stink more than others, but I've never really had one that was just like, I don't know, lower odor. Have you like had like a, not a no odor, but yeah, not when that wind's blowing through it. No, you know, maybe it's, I don't a, believe a little... this. Yes. This I know. List. I, Listen, I don't either. <laughs> it's Durban poison. This is it. top 10 low odor strains, Durban poison, Northern lights, Jack her, Master Kush, White Rhino, Bubble Gum, Train Wreck, Granddaddy Purple, Strawberry Cough, Papaya. I don't think any of that. I mean, I've only grown two of those. No. But I just think I've they pulled this out of their ass. Well, I have grown a lot of those. Cool. Uh, no. And they've all stunk. And everybody opened the bag and goes, ooh, ooh. Yeah. And there's not much you can do about this in the outdoors, guys. I mean, if you're. In, yeah, you'd have to be in like a climate controlled greenhouse with like ca- a carbon filter and shit. It's really hard to do any type of carbon filtration outside. So do take that into consideration when the wind's blowing right. You could be having neighbors three houses down smell that dang. And it's so. tough to mask it, too, because it just comes through. You can have lavender and mint and weed and you'll smell the weed still. Um, let's get into some uh, some grow tips here. Basic stuff, some of this is, and we've covered before, container size, every time we touch on it, it's relevant to what you want to do. Do you need to move these around mm. potentially? I like the, you know, some people yeah. are like, hey, I got a summer barbecue, and I've literally seen this within the DDC, and my uncle's 
uh, wife is a detective. I don't fucking know. Somebody's going to be there that you're like worried about them seeing plants. So do you want to keep them movable so you can chuck them in your garage? So, you know, planting in a hundred gal or a 50 gal, mm. you're not moving that thing. That's a so, lot. Those are big. I, I planted in hundred gallons and they were huge. I'm not sure that the roots ever filled the entire thing up, or at least not the way that they should have. Um, yeah, I see. I've seen huge plants. It doesn't matter, uh, matter about irrigation too. If it's really easy to irrigate that thing, if you've got a stream or a garden hose or something, uh, you can deal with a smaller pot than if you're, you know, bringing in six gallons of you know six gallon tanks of water every time. One, we can tie this right in with starting time too, because plant container size is going to be determined if you're starting in the spring, or you started inside, you go outside in April, and you're maintaining a plant through veg that long. Everywhere I've lived, which has only been growing weed in Vancouver and uh, obviously Denver, Colorado, right around August 15th is when I'm considering we're into flower. You know, it's not always right there, but that takes you right into September 15th, right? Wait, no, October 15th. October 15th, yeah. I'm thinking about two months, weeks, tip. man. Yeah, by my best harvest I have been when we have good weather till the end of October. Like end of October's upper 60s, maybe in the 70s at yeah. days, sunny, um, which we don't always get. Sometimes we just get shut down here at the beginning of October. Uh, so start basically, if you're going to be in smaller containers, let's say five gallons, you want to be able to move them around. Don't put your plants out to like, you can even go out in July. You could have clones started in June and you could put them out in July and take them to bloom in August. For smaller plants, for manageable plants. Other than that, you can go as big as you want, man. You can go ten foot trees. You can grow. So I don't know what. How tall do cannabis plants grow? In and we've seen like pictures down in Mexico, like 17, 20 foot tall plants. Is that possible? What, what Mendo dope say he was growing? Those are about the tallest plants I've seen. About 12, 13 feet. Yeah, I think he said twelve. Yeah, you know, ten to 12, eight, eight to twelve was their average. I mean, you ever been on a twelve foot step ladder? Mm. It's high as fuck. <laughs> Um, I'm, I'm asking the, the, the Googles. Then. It's a, <laughs> right. How tall can my marijuana plants get? Shorter than your knees or taller than your house? Love it. <laughs> Perfect. That's why yeah, you ask very GPT what? next time, man. All right. <laughs> Smart Alex. Yeah, I'm not using that. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, moving awesome. on. We have... Uh, the options of knowing, not the options, being ready, scouting like crazy, you're potentially or more, more than likely going to get some type of pest outside or a mold or a mildew or a bud rot. So you got to be scouting like crazy in veg using plenty of IPM. Hey, you got actually a cool hit here from uh, Aaron Hopkins from Australia. Where'd yeah. you find this? Uh, this is in the comments. But it's, uh, for best outdoor bug deterrent, I've found is to plant spring onions, chives, and garlic chives around your garden from Australia. Well, if anything was going to keep bugs away, it'd be the stink of onions, right? Yes. And I, I remember planting some flowers. Guru actually recommended them because they're an attractant for a certain type of wasp, I believe, that will also, you'll see them working around in the plants and they'll eat anything um, that they can. Like if you get some type of mites. Um, I've had aphids outside. That's pretty common. Ladybugs work great. You can keep them around for a lot of things. Sometimes you can maintain a smaller ladybug po population in your garden area. Granted, some are going to take off if you have an affordable access to them and getting viable ladybugs. Um, having just basic sprays, preventative sprays on hand, neem works good. But dude, for me, when I'm working with nature, if you will, I scout like crazy. I don't like to spray anything. Unless I'm seeing something, I know, Scotty, you're going to be like, well, that's not IPM. My only IPM is scouting, but I don't like messing with nature's balance. I believe there's some good bugs there doing me some, some stuff as well. Now, I will put mechanical barriers up. This year, I'm putting up bug net straight up. I'm going to do autos outside. I'm going to put a bug net over them with bamboo stakes holding it up off the plants. Um, and I'm not going to uh, deal with these corn ear and worm bastards ever again, if you will. Keep yeah. from those guys. Should we touch on that? Autos. That's a good, a good trick for people. Yeah. You yes, it def definitely. I'm just looking at <laughs> what do you think about pests? <clears throat> you know, deer and all that stuff. I've seen a couple uh, effective remedies for that, but seriously, deer will come in and eat your wheat plants, man. Yeah, your plants need to be like my my grow shack here. It's open air, but I do have. I bought some. Uh, I put actually some wire on one side, and then I bought that plastic green fencing. I put on the other side, so something can't just walk in there. 
you guys are going to do stuff like out in a field or out of a greenhouse or out of a structure or gorilla style. Yeah. I mean, deer will eat the hell out of weed. Of course, all kinds of stuff. Hey, so, I was at one um, of those, I was at one of those nursery uh, growers and landscape uh, association meetings a long time ago. And these guys were here. Plant skied. It's not from America. PL, you know, when they have double D's with a Y plant, S K Y D D. I imagine that's Scandinavian. But if you want to talk about <laughs> about a repellent for your uh, for deer and you know weevils and all that stuff, voles, um, man, it's dried blood. They get some kind of blood from slaughterhouse or something, and it's a fear based response. <laughs> uh, it's fear based. They're like, holy shit. I don't know what's going on over there, but I ain't going. It's an interesting. They just smell death. Yes, it's the smell yeah. of death, I'm, man. Huh. I'm sure there's some other options, some type of predator urine or some shit. I even heard like you yeah, that that human urine. Like I, you just go out there and throw some pisses all around your garden when you got to go outside. As long as it's in the private, that'll probably help out too. Hang on a second. I do know about that because I read a book called Yellow Gold before. Uh, if you want to use, it's too hot. The, your human pee is like a twenty zero zero, or maybe it was even more than that. Oh yeah, you it's mean just like pee right in a pot. nitrogen? No, you, you do. You have to dilute one part to twenty parts water. So you pee in a five gallon bucket. Boom. There you go. You just made fertilizer, <laughs> son. Don't even get me on the human or about book, man. I think I sent uh, fertilization. Sorry. Yeah, I got to find that human or handbook. By the way, I have a decent book review if you like, dude. It says hash brownies, hot pot, and other marijuana munchies. It's a recipe book about growing or about uh, cooking with weed. They have a brown gold book. Uh, who that? They do, but you don't want to read it, dude. No, it's uh, a, <laughs> what is that one called? Not brown gold. It's the human or handbook yeah, is human. what it is. Yes, there you go. Hey, yes. Consult uh, Sunny and Bechtopia for any firsthand experience with that. Yeah, that's where I draw the line, yep. man. <laughs> a few yeah, more tips here. You have a start, start inside, question mark. If you're starting seedlings or even if you have a smaller clone, do get your plants a little hardy. Get them a little tough. You know, so they can't just be taken out by one little insect or some, you know, caterpillar comes along and eats your whole little seedling. Uh, hey, and that's then that bricks thing. Go ahead. I just want to say that's that bricks thing. I got a little bricks meter right here and it's covered in weed. But uh, if you can grow a really strong plant, the bugs don't want to come. It's just they're just like, hey, let's go get that weak plant over there. That one looks really strong, pain in the ass. That's where that high bricks growing comes into play. And if you're going to be out there, play around with it. A bricks meter, you just squeeze a little bit of the juice out of the, uh, you know, out of the leaf. You squeeze the juice, all right? Juice. <laughs> and, you, uh, and you just see what color it is. If it's all watery and clear, then, you know, there's not much, uh, not, not a lot of plant material in there. You know, but if it's all green and uh, and opaque, you know, you got high bricks. Just noticing that uh, there's no wind in uh, Studio North, but I was smoking oneies the whole time I was in uh, Maui. So I'm sitting here every time I light this, I'm putting my hand up as a windbreak. <laughs> so ah. I used to do it outside. It's like a kind of don't don't need to do that anyway. Windproof lighter. So start inside. The other thing with start inside is uh, the quick tip of autos, which I like because you can almost get a guaranteed finish unless a pest takes out your shit. Is start in June, put out a seedling, uh, so start a seed inside, put it outside, put it as an auto in June. Get it used to the sun, in and out, maybe a little bit an hour in the sun, bring it back in. You know, you got to harden off your plants unless they start it out there and they're used to that. But an auto will finish, man. If you have it go out in June, you got June, July, by mid August. You're ready to go. And usually everybody has fine summer weather in mid-August. You don't have to fear the cold, which in Colorado, you have to fear the cold. So true. Was it's like 50-something today? It was in the 20s or teens yesterday. You can just have them random snaps come in. It uh, can be difficult. Oh, my God. I greenhouse poly-wrapped my tiki hut and put two... 1,000-watt plug-in heaters out there one time in Colorado because it was getting close to harvest and everything was looking so good. I literally like just wrapped it all up. It was, looked really weird. Luckily, all my neighbors know exactly what I'm doing and don't care. But um, 
man, what else do we got for, for outdoor tips? I touch a uh, shout out to seeds here. Now, uh, as far as genetics, I mentioned, man, check out seeds here. Now, if you guys are looking for seeds, um, and that's what I recommend, man, I love growing seeds and starting them in the environment they're going to be in, uh, seeds here now.com. There's two coupon codes over there, dude, 10 and dude ship. Try them both. Sometimes they won't work if stuff's on sale. And uh, check out all the selection, man. Biggest seed bank out there. Ships right from the States. You don't have to wait forever. You get your seeds within a week. And, uh, yeah, shout out James Bean. What's up? Hey, can I shout out the banner? You're right here. Can I put you on the spot, brother? What's up? Can we make a Patreon post for uh, uh, to see outdoor tips? We got so many good growers there. Would you all give us your outdoor tips? Because... Uh, I'm lacking. I've got, I don't know, two seasons of outdoor and I mean greenhouse. You can. You said you won't even grow like like two freaking 10 gals. Like, is that going to be enough stank to get, you know, potentially? Yeah, that suck in the to green? get busted for two 10, 10 gals? You know, if I have the same I freaking mean, problem I had from growing uh, 10 hundred gals? Ask, uh, as Grambo, do you, are you going to grow anything outdoors? Do you have any privacy? Can you do it? No, my house is all just locked down. I live right by CU uh, in Denver, and so or DU in Denver, not CU. So yeah, I purposely picked an area where I could go out and do comedy and walk the street and get food and everything. So yeah, I I, I used to live in Green Valley Ranch where I could out and by the airport, and right. I didn't. And so as always, if you can do it, because you never know. I thought, oh, I got plenty of years to do it. So anytime you can, do so it. you said. One criteria for where, you, where you're like, hmm, I need to move, but I need to be able to walk the street and get food. Like <laughs> yeah, you can that walk was, out your door. I always wanted to, my, my ex, I lived in Chicago for a little bit with my ex, and I always loved, it's like, oh, you can just walk and get a slice of pizza. I'm from Iowa originally, where if you don't have a car, you, you're effed, you know, so. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that is interesting. That is interesting. I think about all the people that live in cities that don't have cars, because one, you can't afford it. You, there's nowhere to put no it. Parking. And, yeah. Yeah. Crazy nut. For sure. All right. Yeah. Let's shout out to uh, DGC producers here before we go into some comments. I want to give it up to, we don't make the names, <laughs> Cooter Juice, what's up? As well as Scott Pipkin. Scott Pipkin. How's it going? Pipkin. And it's very close to what Courtney over at Way to Grow calls me. He calls me Scotty Pimpin. <laughs> and I like it. I'll take it. It's the only one that does. But yeah, well, plus he, he says it with the, the, the Jamaican accent, which makes it, I mean, I, I can't really mimic it. All the Come on, do it. Do it. Stuff. Yeah, they'll make fun of you. <laughs> no. You're not being recorded or nothing. Scotty Pimpin. Yeah, man. Ah, well, there you go. Uh, who I you got? Am, who else you got in here, Scotty? I'm Dapper Dan Man. <laughs> I'm Dapper right. Dan Man. All right, hang on. I'm going to say it like a question. I'm Dapper Dan Man? I'm a... Now say it with authority. I'm Dapper Dan, man. I'm a Dapper Dan, man. <laughs> I'm a Dapper Dan, man. All right. You guys, we want you, man. You're missing out. If you're not a DGC producer, becoming part of this community, hanging out over on Discord with all the growers, man, that is a big, we don't mention it enough, Scotty, as far as growers helping growers over there, uh, experienced growers like Maestro, Soup the Gardener. Uh, man, I can't, I can't even start shout out names because I'm going to diss on people. Rasufa. Um, and there's all these different chat rooms, I'll say, with different subjects. Uh, DudeGrows.com forward slash report will show you all the other benefits at $10 a month to be a DDC Pedusa. Pays for itself with, with real growers, Scotty, hooking up the discounts. Yes. Um, check it out. You guys produce the show. Um, we actually had a meeting before the show about talking about how the show runs, making payroll and shit. I'm like, man, I don't want I don't want sponsor laden ads all throughout the show. Can't do it. Right. Wouldn't do it. Uh, so thank you, DDC producers that enable that. Enable me and Scotty to sit here and have a fun conversation uh, and entertain and learn with y'all. Look, if Saltine Crackers with Butter wants to advertise on our show, <laughs> we should take it. What's wrong with Saltine Crackers with Butter? We'll get into it later, dude. All right. They are delicious. Though. Dude grows. Dudegrows.com forward slash support. You got a couple comments here, man. This is Chris McNeese. Um, and I, I just wanted to hook this up because this is a DDC producer. This is about community. Real quick, if you guys are in Colorado, Denver area, and I think this sounded fun. I wish I was there. Dude, I'm here in Denver Metro. I was wondering if there's a way that any of our crew would want to consult on a new grow for me. I know we have a bunch here locally. Thanks, man. I used to try and do that, Scotty. Um, I took out an ad in the Westward back in the day. I think it paid like almost a thousand dollars. This dude grows consulting. And I think I got like two customers. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> It's when you needed my mom and my team. Okay. It's 
And the, the, the first guy I consulted with, if you guys haven't heard the story before, real quick, as you say, real quick, was a guy that was a customer of the grow store. It was nothing about growing. He was just some guy that had a bit of money and wanted to turn his basement into grow to make more money. I'm like, cool, I'll come set up a deep water culture system. We'll get some clones <laughs> from the dispensary that came with root aphids. No. It was so frustrating. No. Literally my yeah. first consulting. No. <laughs> That's why, I, I mean, I'd be glad to... I don't know what you get. It. There's real pros out there. I mean, if you're designing a commercial grow, you want to talk about efficiency, what type of air conditioners, where to put. Hey, I say not even a commercial though. I mean, if you're setting up a four lighter and you're really, you know, you get the HVAC. Luckily, I had an HVAC guy. My neighbors wanted to do that totally right. And hey, we, here's how we want to do a vent through the wall. We can do air sharing between your veg and your bloom. You can throw down on a four lighter and get, you know, you get a plumber because you want a, a, a gross sink over here and you want you actually need a drain there. It's going to make your life easier over the next four years. So I just wanted to say it doesn't as Chris McNeese here here is doing. If you guys are in Denver and can help him out, it's Canarado Chris at Gmail. Canarado Chris at Gmail. I love DDC helping DDC growers. It's fun building grow rooms, guys. Yes. Um, hey, I got it. I got one, man. I just had to put this. I'll scroll up. You want, uh, you know, playing around, uh, adding to the format or adding to the show. And every now and again, I see something that's real organic. All right. So this is Tark 3469. And just a shout out to New Mill. Jaron, a friend of the show, they are a, a supporter of our show. Uh, I'm using New Mill and the shit works. It just does. Best, best liquid newts I've ever ran by far. I used that winter frost and I was impressed. So I just will shout out to uh, our boys over at New Millennium. Uh, well done. Yeah, I dig it, man. I dig it. Like you said, when you see it coming from the grower, um, in the, in, in, I was going to say in the internets, man, what's getting, what's wrong with Ooh, me? The it coming from the grower. <laughs> <laughs> oh, here's another one regarding a show. I think it was last show. We we're talking about inflated THC testing. It was yep. an article out of Canada and growers basically not growers, but bringing it to our attention that dispensaries, uh, they tested like 45 plus strains and levels ranged from 12 to 45 percent off of what the label is saying. Terp Tarmigan chiming in. What's up, Terp? Terp. So we've been having a little bit of a little bit of a battle uh, to get the cannabinoid levels corrected and or tested properly. When they take a gram gr and grind it up and scoop a tenth off the bottom, the results out are overinflated by a large amount. I get it. I didn't know that's basically they're probably. Oh, uh, here, he's saying it. The cannabinoids are heavier and sink to the bottom, giving false reading. It's just bad testing that works for great marketing. Proper testing shows cannabinoid levels to be up to half of what companies claim. Hey, but what yo. it comes down to is terps are the key. A 12% THC strain with good terps will beat a 35% with poor terp profile anytime. Terp up, I brothers. Agree. That's a good point. I agree with Mr. Tarmigan. All about the Terps, man. Where's the stickers? Where's the shirts? Well, anybody that's ever smoked THC distillate knows that that's 100% THC. Those diamonds and sauce. But if you get crappy diamonds and sauce where the sauce sucks, uh, you don't really get all that high. You get a little high. You get an eyeball buzz, you know? Damn, Richard Horton putting putting me in my place, I think. We were talking about plant count. I'm like, hey, no. if they're allowing you to grow plants then just, you can grow more than, you know, unless you, you're going to have code enforcement coming to your house and Richard, Richard's here, Richard Horton says more than a four, or more than four plants is a felony in some places. So some worry about plant count. I didn't know yeah. that. I thought usually when it went to wreck, it was basically going out of, you know, felony means enforced by police officers and law and but maybe it's oh, not wreck no. or anything there. Maybe it's just, you know, some place where, you know, I don't know. Do they have anything in Wyoming? And they're like, hey, four plants, a misdemeanor. After that, it's a felony. That seems insane. But I guess states are allowed to make their own laws regarding felony. Can you? Can you? Can states just do that? Decide that this is a felony? Yeah, I think so. Huh. I'm not a lawyer, though. That's why I don't go to Wyoming. <laughs> Wyoming's 40 minutes from here, and there's a lot of beautiful stuff there. I'll check it out on the internet. Thank you. The, uh, <laughs> man, that's, that just, that's another show. When you said yeah, and by the way. Me think about, yeah. 
Oh, no, I put this on. I just threw this comment on. Remember you were just talking about being in the city and you're like, people don't yeah. even own a car there, you know? And there's uh, Grambo lives in Denver where he's able to do whatever. The point is everybody has a different reality. So yeah, we're sitting here like, oh man, they'll never come. The inspector shows up and doesn't even want to inspect my 10 plants and he can sp- you know, smell them. But we all have different realities. And uh, James, is, uh, no, it's not James. Uh, Richards is that more than four plant. Maybe it's completely illegal where he's at. He can get away with four point, you know, four plants, but anything after that, you got problems. It's just, uh, yeah. you know, I got to remember that there's other spots in the country that are uh, uh, still dealing with those laws. Just stay below 100, bro. Just stay below 100. 99 plants. Mm-hmm. That's five years minimum mandatory. What's the saying? Do we have something for that? I got 99 plants, but uh, do we make anything up for that? What do we got? We must, man. We must, right? <laughs> Bring back <laughs> parodies. I love it. Um, uh, this is just Scotty, something sweet. It's just, it makes you feel good. Grambo, we uh, hung out. We're doing that Saturday show. All of us are. Mm -hmm. And uh, I says, well, I guess I'm going to just James Hale. Well, I guess I'm going to quit work because I can't catch the Saturday live chat. Great show as always, guys. But I just want to give a little kudos, man. That's a fun show. It's something new that we're doing. Not not a ton of grow, more just uh, friends hanging out Saturday morning. So, uh, yeah, I'm enjoying doing that as well. So right on. And this is one I put on there because Billy Buds, you are right. I don't, I think he, you know, it says Scotty seems to know a lot about growing. Sure would like to see his garden. I agree, man. I would like to show my garden. I would like to show the bucket full of bud. It's really impressive. I'm so psyched that I uh, was able to get that uh, with the ozone and the PM fighting the PM. And by the way, it did not steal terps. That was what I was worried about. There was a lot of chatter about that. Um, Anyone's welcome to open that bucket up right now. Oh, no, I'm not allowed to show it. Uh, uh, Yeah. But I'm, I'm psyched about it, and I can't show it. It's a bummer. To tie into the YouTube war, we could just explain quickly that, obviously, uh, we've been working on this show for maybe eight years now, and we care about it, and we like to grow the audience. We had YouTube completely cancel us before. Yeah. Granted, we're a podcast as well, and thank you for everybody that's listening. Um, but the, the way that you work with YouTube is getting age restricted really affects the way your show is shared. And, and we were learning all this. Thank you, Grambo. I'm just talking your words here. Um, he's done a lot of work behind the scenes and with all this effort we're putting in, we want to get the message out. Stay for the after show. You guys want to see some dank nugs and buds. If you're a DDC Pedusa, uh, we hook up seeds, have a good time. But I, I still feel we're having a good time delivering information. It does suck. Sometimes I really want to show. We had a segment called What's Going On in Our Grows. We are both growers. Um, and I have a video coming out for you, you producers as well of what's going on in my grow. I'm about to harvest some autos. And I'm like, you, Scotty, just was about to take some pics of them for the show. And I'm like, shit, damn it. <laughs> like, yeah, no, no yeah. pics of them. Hopefully that's going to change, man. Prohibition is falling. I don't know what the hell YouTube's doing, taking its time. Um, but that will change eventually. Uh, one more comment. Slayer yes. 420. We need to hey. get Scotty and dude to post pics on Discord. I didn't uh, think about I, that. I don't that even, is that's the yeah. That's that's the move right now. Is I was like, what platform do I post on? And then I'm like, Discord, dummy. Learn that shit. I'll ask Soup about that on the 420 Happy Hour tomorrow. If you guys uh, aren't catching that, it's another producer benefit. Um, but. Yeah, I need to get a little more Discord action going. Only enough time in the day for so much, but I agree. I got plant material to show these auto flowers. I'm looking at right over my shoulder are just beautiful. They got dark. They got a little bit of black, purple. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I really do want to show those. Thanks, Slayer420, and thank you. Shout out to a couple of DDC producers, Jimmy Joe and Dr. Nicker B. All right. How about Xander? It's pretty cool. And you just have one name, Xander. I like Grambo. Swank. Yeah, you don't have a Slayer shirt on today. I actually have a, a Slayer Slimer shirt. Sl- Slimer, Slimer. Like from Ghostbusters. Yeah, I was a huge Ghostbusters nerd. I'm a big metal nerd. So, yeah, me and Slayer 420, we've bonded many times over metal. We've talked about... Wait, you're, me- you're, What's that, dude? Yeah. Camera ain't working? Oh, no, can't, no. Can't put your... He, he you just can't see me yet. I, uh, it's hard to send me over to you, dude. But, yeah. The people can see. No worries. They, they <laughs> put Ghostbusters Good. and Slayer together. Yeah. I mean, that's how they get <laughs> to make Slimer. Dude, that was some AI shit, no? No, this is old school. I got this back in like high school. 
<laughs> uh, let's get into what's growing on, man. What we're smoking on. I want to start off because we, we haven't done what we're smoking on necessarily. And I got a big hookup here uh, from Stinky Gromo Sapien. Stinky Gromo Sapien, a.k.a. Mr. Jazz Cabbage on Dude Grows. Oh, so um, hey, dude, Scott, I yes, went sir. to the Stinky. He, he, he owes up to this name, Stinky Gromo Sapien, because I went to the Canada Post and the lady, she's like, I think you got a package here. Cause I gotta go, I go to Canada post, uh, to ship whenever I'm shipping uh, recharge out to the Canadians. So they know me there and they know like kind of what I'm into. And she's like, she's like, I had to put it, in, I had to wrap a bag over it. Cause it's stinking up the whole back room. No. I'm like, okay. <laughs> and she wasn't like super pissed or anything. She right. was just kind of like, yeah. And then she goes, I'm like, Oh, I'm sorry about that. And she goes, yeah, we got a few of you guys. Cause you can send weed what? legally. Um, and wow, so she thinks you're just moving and it, they're all, man. they're all in jars. They're all in these little, yeah, um, nice yeah. little, you know, came in little some tiny Mason jars, but they, we just stunk through that. So shout out. I'm smoking some, uh, exotic genetics, sugar puss today, as well as very cool. Check this out, Scotty. Bam. Keeping what the wife that? happy. hundred year old hair heirloom family garlic, 2022 harvest. Love it. Dude, you're so dead. So, hey, did that package say from Stinky Gromo Sapien on it? Like for the return been address? Because awesome. that would have been awesome. Up. <laughs> yes. Yes. Know, what do you got going mine. on here? Not mine. Oh, man, I just hang on a second. <laughs> Grambo. Yeah, man. I show, show me this. I'm smoking uh, a Pure Vita joint is what I'm smoking. I see was actually supposed to come grab some of this, but... Can't get his it tastes deep in, in work, man. So I'm smoking that whole thing myself. But uh I was I was bummed out. I was doing these comments a couple of days area last night, and I saw that we were just I mean, people were asking us to put our weed up. And we used to put our weed up and it's really dinged us. Remember, we lost our channel uh, six months ago or so. And I was I was thinking about how lame it is. And I was like, dude, I started like cannabis discrimination really is what it is. It's alive and well. Uh, you and YouTube, I, I typed it in the chat GPT. I typed, why does YouTube hate cannabis? And it goes, well, it's a, uh, it's a, it's a private corporation. So they're welcome to do whatever they want is what they said. And I was like, fuck, well, I really like watching YouTube, man. But, um, I was just, remember that McDonald's I got a couple of days ago. Yep. I started doing the experiment where I just, I'm leaving it outside. Wait, wait, like, this is the McDonald's Scotty found. If you have not found it, found yeah. some McDonald's that was left by like a delivery service. And yeah. Uh, yeah. So you're leaving it outside now. The challenge just how long will it stay? I'll just say yes. And I mean, there's, I threw, there was bread that got molded and I threw it out uh, onto the lawn and all the birds came and grabbed it. This stuff sits. I mean, nothing is touching it. My dog that will eat anything doesn't even recognize it as food. And I was just kind of thinking to myself that they're willing to Facebook or Facebook or, uh, you know, all the platforms, YouTube are so psyched to tell you about that. They're so do me a favor, Grandpa. Do you see? Yeah. The marijuana is safer than McDonald's. This is a meme that got me thinking about it. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. It is, man. And they'll take the McDonald's money. They'll take the KFC money. But they won't, they, you know, they won't not even they won't take weed money. They won't even let us show plants. Show people how to grow it. It's pretty unjust. You can. You can. There, there's the people are not screaming at us right now, but I got a message like, hey, there's other YouTubers, there's other people that definitely are showing straight plant material, and you can. But you you get age gated, and we are trying to, you know, continue to grow the show, just to be clear. Man, it is a tough trade-off to be authentic and then try to also grow the show, I guess, or Find, you know, find other growers to hang out with. So it's a little bit of a tough trade off, I guess. Can we do it sometimes? Grandpa, can we, can we show weed sometimes? It can sometimes. And the thing is, I love how YouTube likes to frame it as uh, it's like, oh, it's, it's age gating. That's the way they frame it. It's not really age gating. We're not concerned with age. It's what it truly is, is subscriber gating. So like the people that you see that, that show the flower just are like without worrying about it, they got a hundred thousand. Like if the guys still have their old channel, you guys won't see it. It just doesn't get pushed out to people. So the idea of like trying to find the balance, but it is changing. I, I do a lot of YouTube research and as soon as, YouTube's not against it. This, as soon as they can get their financial thing figured out and not have their sponsors pull out, then uh, it will go through. So we got maybe a couple more months, yeah. hopefully. All right. So uh, then Discord, you, man. Discord. 
Sure. You not inspired, but I guess inspired or tr- not triggered. Triggered means like, well, if you're triggered, it's it's kind of a angry response. Is that what that trigger means? You're coming back with a little bit of anger. Maybe. Well, the, yeah, the KFC thing triggered me. <laughs> Do me a favor. Just come on. That's triggering right there. That man. Pretty triggering. That, they're going to sell the shit out of that. They'll give you a coupon. Buy one. Actually, not. That oh, wait, seems like the kind of thing that people get in a fight over, right? It's two chicken patties fried as hell with cheese and bacon in the middle. And that's the... What is it? The double up or There's something the double like that? Down. I'm embarrassed to admit. Am I the only one here that's tried this thing? Shut up, man. I've, I've had it. It's very, very Christ. bad. It's just very bad. It's the best. I mean, it's a lot of things I like, you know? Yeah. It's poor quality. So while you're eating that, <laughs> that's that's so bad. I'll transition it over. Yeah. <laughs> well, um, and, and granted, it's, it's not available to everyone. While I was in Hawaii... It was really easy to eat clean. There's a lot of good fresh food, fresh fruits, uh, you know, the fish, tuna, if you're into that. Um, it was really, I mean, it, you know, 10 day vacation, you can let loose. Maybe you eat bigger meals. You don't watch your diet. You gain a little weight. I actually like lost a little weight um, in Hawaii. And that made me think about clean eating when you're talking about KFC and McDonald's and shit. And I found a, a, for a little information here. You know, guys know how we're growers. We like to talk about the rhizosphere, keeping a living soil, keeping everything healthy down there. Uh, that makes me think about my microbiome. I didn't think about that until I started using microbes and growing. So I wanted to pull, this is from a PhD, which I think says something like you went to Whoa. school for a long time. Call him years. doctor. All right. The doctor. Um, Sam, Sam Westreach um, says, so speaking of the gut microbiome the collection of many different species of bacteria living inside your lower intestinal tract this little rainforest which i love of many different bacterial species all living in a balance of cooperation and competition lives as a passenger in our bodies but its composition has effects on our own health a little bit more just sit back still our microbiome impacts how we digest food and what nutrients we absorb from it but it affects Don't stop there. It helps train our immune system, teaching our immune cells what is dangerous and what isn't. It can contribute to our weight gain and loss, and the wrong microbes seem to promote obesity. Even if it even produces neurotransmitters and hormones that impact our mood and mental health. You've talked about that. That's kind of a trip when you're thinking about your microbiome affecting your mental health and mood. How Um, great did you feel eating clean? How how great did you feel eating clean? And how crappy do you feel when you eat McDonald's? I don't know. Oh my god. Fast food. I'll give you, I'll tell you, man, I have a guilty pleasure of cheesesteaks. All right. Once a month, I'll go to the Philly cheesesteak place and I feel like crap. I have to take a nap after the cheesesteak. Dude, I can counter you with on the flight home, six hour flight, five hour flight when you're going with the jet stream. Uh, Hawaiian Airlines, cool airline. Anyway, they offered us a uh, uh, pepperoni cheese wrap, uh, like a pot pocket. It reminded me of like when I was a kid and I knew the hot pocket. <laughs> and I was like, dude, man, we got five no. hours. I got some snacks. I'm just going for it. And this the is after a, like there, man. nine days of just eating clean and drinking immunity booster juices out of the juice machine in my body. I got halfway through it and it was just like, oh my God. Like, well, I don't know what this is going to do to me. My body's telling me. And I think that's like the, yeah, the bacteria in my gut talking yes. to my brain and being like, what are you doing? What, you what's up think, with this shit? You don't think different gut bacteria eat? Of course, they eat different things. And you're promoting the ones that eat, you know, living food, uh, easily digestible food, uh, uh, fruits. You know, there's lots of uh, fiber in there for them to grow on or for them to break down. There's fruit just like I put molasses in recharge to use it as some energy. Uh uh, same with the sugars that they have in the fruit. So stuff like that, man, you are feeding totally different and cultivating a different microbiome than if you're eating heavy meats and things with uh, uh, preservatives in there. And there's a ton. If you're eating a frozen pizza or those, that uh, sandwich that you were just, uh, the hot pocket that you were talking about, you're loading your body with preservatives. And the preservatives are meant to, you know, keep molds and, uh, and things from growing and bacteria from growing and you have bacteria in your stomach man so yeah it's uh definitely damaging well i challenge you and i'm no i'm not perfect at this before we can get to the news here um three real popular ones i see as far as preservatives sodium benzenate benzenate benzenite sodium nitrate and a lot of meats and this one i see in a lot of shit mostly potassium sorbate 
I can yeah. literally because I like hummus, and I can usually find the one that just it's just you know it has uh, a little bit of lemon juice in there to act as like a lower pH preservative. There's plenty, but there's so much food that has that potassium sorbate in it. It's tough if you're at a conventional grocery store to try mm-hmm. and avoid all of it. Um, but yeah, be aware of sometimes what you're what you're what you're doing and take care of that gut microbiome. Yeah, I agree. Dr. Dude, and Dr. Dude. Like I, I'll even like I made a Italian over the weekend and there's sausages and one of them has all those chemicals in there. And there's nice, you know, fresh ones from a local place that doesn't, you know, and it's certainly worth it. There's a reason why you feel like crap when you eat some of that stuff. Just loaded you yourself with chemicals. The counter argument is like, well, my grandpa ate a half pound of bacon a day. Drank a six pack of beer, shot of whiskey every day of his life. Didn't give a shit about what he ate, and he lived to ninety three. Like, okay. yeah. I don't know. Yeah, no, but I don't how you know. feel while you're doing it too, though, man. It's how you feel. Well, you know, when you're when your gut's healthy, you're usually feeling pretty damn good. Damn, now that you say it, I do think that my old timer neighbor goes and meets his brother down at the McDonald's every morning. <laughs> huh? You know. Huh, maybe horrible. there's something to it. Hey, I was uh, looking at the McDonald's. Like I said, I'm going to do an experiment about it. But then someone in the comments said, hey, Google the woman that left the McDonald's, you know, or kept it for, I think it was four, 17 years. Do me a favor, Grandpa, can we play this? Sure. <laughs> she had McDonald's, I guess. I don't know where it was, but for 17 years. Oh, that smells bad. And like bacteria didn't eat it. <laughs> So that smells bad. Oh my, shut up. This has got to be a troll, right? Those things are perfect looking. Yeah. I mean, there's plenty of people that have done this type of content regarding McDonald's. I don't know. Not worth my time to figure out. You let me know how your shit does outdoors. I still don't believe you can't feed some of that burger. Do you have a burger? Yeah. Uh, the no, there's have, like some. Or is it or egg? Egg, egg McMuffin type thing. <laughs> I'd get your dog to eat some of that egg. I actually can't watch this. I'm not easily (laughs) grossed out. This is grossing me out. Oh, man. All right. Let's get to the news here. I want to shout out some DDC producers, Blow Dro Bro, and Father Staples. What's going on, DDC? Who you got, Scotty? Staples. I like it. Crystal Steed. All right. So uh, you pulled the news today. Can we bring weed on a plane? Talked about it plenty, but maybe there are some new light out of CNBC.com. I don't remember. Um, we did talk about this a bunch. I have a very bad memory of um, this stuff. Basically, we've done the, you know, if you're from my experience, if you're flying from, there's like two things from legal state to a legal state. You, and if you're flying out of a legal state and landing in prohibition land, usually a non-issue. Maybe it's not your lucky day and they have a drug sniffing marijuana dog, which I want to know. Do they really have dogs that sniff for marijuana at airports anymore? I think it's I don't think so. So it's mainly because you're um, allowed. What, what I've seen from here, I, I read this. Art, I actually read this article, dude. And what it's saying is they're not cops. TSA people aren't cops. They can call cops if they want to, or they can choose to just let you go through. That's why when we were at the Emerald Cup that one time and the girl put all that, uh, all those jars right on, <laughs> right on the uh, belt, the x-ray belt. And they go, Jim, what are we going to do here? Because they're not cops. They don't have to do anything if they don't want to. So they're not out to bust balls for small quantities. You are totally allowed to bring CBD wherever you go. And so they just don't want to bust balls and start testing for that. So unless you have commercial quantities, you're fine. And that's freaking awesome because we got a bunch of people showing up with weed at the DGC Cup. I mean CBD weed. We I got pulled out a cup. I got pulled out of line in Stillwater, and they went through my bag, and I had a bunch of allegedly I had a bunch of different samples in there. And the thing they were upset about is that I had an unopened bottle of water, and they put all my jars back in totally. Yeah. In, and uh, so I, I was cr- I was visibly <laughs> shaking. I was like, oh man. Yeah. So yeah, it's a little bit looser, but also just like the thing about don't measure your plants that doesn't go everywhere. But Stillwater, Oklahoma was cool. That doesn't mean everywhere is. Now a lot of play. I'm telling you. CNBC says so. Huh? All right. <laughs> I have a question in here. Can, yes, two sir. things. One in Denver, they're like, oh, you can uh, use the amnesty box if you want, or if the TSA wants, they like they, for whatever reason, I've never had an issue. You can return it to your car, or 
you can get you can pass it to someone not traveling if it's no more than two ounces. So you, what do you just you're in security line like, hey, anybody want any over there? Yeah. You guys want some weed? Who's not? Hundred eighth, eighth, man. I got an I, I got a forty dollar eighth here, man. There you go. This is um, a while, and then the, oh yes, sir. Go ahead. While this is what happens if T, it says what if TS, TSA finds marijuana on me? While the TSA isn't actively searching for marijuana other than federal and or other federally illicit drugs. Hear that, man? They're not searching for any. So those dogs are just explosives dogs. They're not out for any drugs, man. If they do find the amount that exceeds local limits, which vary widely for both weed and THC-infused edibles, it will alert local officials, man. And then it does talk about the amnesty boxes. Mm-hmm. It's pretty funny. Man. That's the one in Chicago right there. The one in Denver is way less like noticeable. I love they talk about like there's police. <laughs> yeah. When amnesty boxes are cleared and there's items in the box, officers will create a report, inventory the cannabis or cannabis products, and then they'll be disposed of. And similar how the narcotics are disposed of. Bullshit. <laughs> they are taking those weed, that weed home and giving it to their friends and their wife and shit. <laughs> Absolutely. Dude, this people like that amnesty box reminds me of there was some I forgot the stat, but it was staggering. I couldn't believe how many people go through security and forget they have a handgun in their bag. Like it's <laughs> it's registered. It's legit. Like it's not right. like they're trying to do anything. You're like, whoa, it's, it's in the hundreds. Like, how do you forget that? I will say that. God, I had this, a gun on The me. same Stillwater Airport when me and Banner were rechecking in as CEOs, the guy in front of us was checking his sniper rifle. <laughs> so it's a sliding scale in Stillwater. Yeah. yeah. I'm not sure if you were going to own a sniper rifle, Stillwater, Oklahoma would probably be a perfect place to do it, right? I imagine. Yeah. Lots of land. <laughs> For sure. My thing that... Boy what your choice of target is. I think that's the only thing. I know. What would you do? I don't want to shoot a tree, man, okay? You know what you do is you get an old car, like a shooting car. (laughs) My shooting car. (laughs) I think watermelons would be good. All right, let's take you to the next uh, news story. You got this Bay Area startup is preserving the world's best pot strains out of sfgate.com. What's this about, Scotty? It's about a tissue culture lab opening up in, uh, uh, I guess, the Bay Area, San Francisco Bay Area. And uh, just we've seen this before. I was curious what you guys think, because didn't Phylos Bioscience do this to where they're going, they're collecting all these strains, they're cataloging them, and then they're doing tissue culture, uh, which is cool because tissue culture cleans, they call it cleaning up the uh, the plants or the genetics, meaning that if there's any viruses or anything in there, anything that's slowing the growth down, uh, they're able to eliminate that and get you back to the true uh, genetics. So it is cool technology. Um, Do you trust a company owning all your strains? It's good for a a business. Uh, For example, the plants can be kept in what is essentially a permanently suspended life inside jars until they're called upon and divided. So for a commercial grower that man, what if my weather event or something, you know, these sure. two strains I've been selling, I have actual contracts to get this strain to these set of dispensaries. So yeah, having something preserved offsite that then you can call them and say, Hey, on this date, I'm going to need 400 of those starts ready to go. Yep. yep. It's huge. And that's how so, I run a commercial like- nursery in, in Florida. And that's how my customers do it. They call me up. I need a thousand of this variety of bamboo at this date. I need 400 of these. And so why would, you know, growing cannabis plants be any different? It says Node Labs um, has partnered with companies like Cookies and Wiz Khalifa's Khalifa Kush. Oh, Khalifa Kush. That's all I smoke. <laughs> I just got to ask, do you think, let's say, you know, with Soup the Gardener has an adventure pack, he's getting into breeding and people are growing out, seeing some great bud. Is there any reason why other than marketing, that bud isn't as good as cookies or Khalifa Kush? Other than marketing, no, but I I shouldn't say, man, dude, cookies is, is that guy has some legit shit, man. We, we talked about him earlier, uh, a couple weeks ago. People came back with a lot of legit shit that he's done. And I, so I don't, I'm not shitting on, on somebody the, 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 successful. The, I've never tried this, the strains. And I, every, every breeder I've talked to, 
um, does say, I mean, marketing is huge in, in the game of, you know, staying alive as a breeder. I don't know if uh, Heisey is Heisey still there. Can you ask him how important marketing is on a one to 10? Everything, man. It's everything. <laughs> Um, but, uh, I'm just also a guy that sometimes by nature shits on hype. Like, is it hype for a reason or is sure. it hype because, and, and then people that wear like a cookies hoodie, like for no, I'm sorry, you got your daughter. I think a cookie. It's hoodie not, hoodie. but it's not for no reason. It's cause they want to say something without saying it with their mouth. <laughs> hey, I smoke weed. I got it. I like I got good it. weed. Yeah. I got no problem with that. And by the way, the cookies backpack that I bought her has a lock on it. Just a built-in lock on it. <laughs> That's pretty cool. Next time you I see cookies, I'm going to mess with people. I'm going to be like, dude, my favorite, hey. uh, Girl Scout. You know, I like the uh, Thin Mints in the freezer. Um, Guess what? You dickhead. Don't really- <laughs> they have Girl Scout cookie Thin Mints cut, man. I mean, that's uh, that's a mm. real thing, man. And by the way, it's amazing. There's a reason why we know about it, because it was amazing. And they did that, you know. I don't know if it was Burner himself or whatever, but that company really put out some good shit. I don't know about Khalifa Kush now, all right? Although Wiz Khalifa tells me it's all he smokes, all right? Um, let's take it to we got a little bit to laugh at and a few more DDC producers to shout out for producing the show thank you dudegrows.com forward slash support be the DGC you're missing out you're missing out if you're listening sitting there just taking advantage I'm just kidding uh, but do check out dudegrows.com forward slash support just like tripping on the couch did yeah. as well as Loki is it Loki some type Loki. of Loki uh, I don't know. Japanese animation stuff? Rambo? Anything? It's the god of tricksters in Old Norse. It's like it become popularized with like... Uh, it is a god. That, uh, yeah. The Thor and everything. So like Thor uh, and Loki get along. But Loki's the trickster god. Actually, Jim Carrey's the mask. The mask was Loki's mask. Oof. Loki. Woo. I knew he. I gotta give Rambo's got some good. Some, I give you credit. You got some good knowledge up there. I mean, you used to be able <laughs> you to. Think ask it's the guru, guru chair. Well, I'm always nervous because I know a lot about grow, but I'm so nervous sitting in the guru chair of like, well, here's what you know about. I always want to interject with grow talk, but it's yeah. like, ah, let the I learn from these two. So why would I interject? You know, maybe it was just the chair after all. It is the chair, baby. Huh. <laughs> <laughs> all right, I'm giving it up to Magnus Black. What's yes. growing on? Thank you, DDC. You should have um, named your kid Magnus. <laughs> Nothing says manly like Magnus, right? <laughs> Remember the world's strongest man? His name yes. was Magnus Mag- for Magnuson. <laughs> <laughs> His legal name, Magnus <laughs> for Magnuson. So I'm thinking, man. That's yeah. awesome, man. I love it. Yeah. You got to just be careful with that, though. Put the pressure on. What if you're just like, you know, this... You know, I don't know. I don't want to shit on it. Like weak sauce, just like a yeah, little, I don't know, a little dude. Yeah. Like they named me Magnus. Damn it! Yeah. Huh. Huh. Never thought okay. of that. Again. Noah's arc and memes here. Memes are on dudegrows.com. While you're over on dudegrows.com, use that search bar, guys. Check out what's growing on over there for your grow. And this is, I like this. It's a very simple. We're looking at a picture of Noah's arc with the, like <laughs> dove coming back. I believe in the story is in the Bible, the dove came back with like a piece of like leaf material or something to show that there's land and they're all stoked. Hmm. And uh, he's bringing back a a weed leaf and everybody's really stoked. Everybody, the giraffe, the alligator, the monkey. I love it. Noah's got his hands up in the air. (laughs) He's like, thank God. (laughs) Thunder Barbarian. Thank you, sir. That one's adorable. That's the most adorable meme I've seen. That's beautiful. Yep. And we'll still piss people (laughs) off with it. Yep. (laughs) <laughs> uh, Scotty, did you find cool. this one? I did. I just found this scrolling, and uh, I don't know. She does seem cool, huh? <laughs> this is girl just smoking a a bong by her on her couch, and she says, "I like to party." And by party, I mean stay home and smoke a lot of weed. Is this some? She looks like she should be somebody that should be known. Is she? Is she an actress or anything? Not sure. I don't know. Um, I don't watch a lot of TV. I guess that's code, though, back in the day, right? Is that the, co- the code for cocaine? I like to party. Do you like to party? Is that mainly what it used to be code for? Oh, that is the code. Yes, sir. <laughs> don't screw that one up. Sure, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, uh, well, they can mean different things. Just like here. It, to us, it's it true. means weed. We should At the gay club, go around I don't know to the what DG- it means, man. It's definitely something different. The DGC Cup. 
walk around. Do you like to party? See what people get get out of it. DGC I'll Cup, June 3rd, 2023, ddccup.com. Forgot to, forgot to remind y'all, uh, come on out, man. We've got over 50 strains of cannabis to judge. Everybody's a judge. Go get your tickets, ddccup.com. Plenty of details there as well. Where to stay, what to do, who to hang out with. I'm just getting really stoked for that event. All um, right. You are stoked. You're a bundle of energy. DDC, man. It's time to uh, say peace out to everybody else. Let's do this after show for the DDC producers. I got some dank nugs to look at. Um, I got some seeds to hook up. And uh, yeah, everybody else, stay higher, my friends. Until next time, we'll be coming at you. See you Saturday morning, yo. Hey, take it easy, dude. All right. Hell Come on, let's after show it, man. You just keeping it rolling? Yeah, we got Hell yeah. Do me a favor. Show me. <laughs> just show I wanted to show this meme. This is Pot Casso Patio.